Hello, welcome back to the YouTube channel of Bethel Evangelical Free Church Hanley. I'm Pastor Gervais Charlie. This is another church in Worcestershire. This is the little church of St. Anne Wire Piddle. Um, English people will laugh at the name, but others might we ask why it's amusing. Ask an English person if you want to know. But Wire Piddle is named for the Piddle Brook, which runs through the village, or rather runs by down at the bottom near the church. There has been a church here since before the Norman Conquest, and it's believed that there was at least some stone structure then because some stones have been found. But the church was rebuilt in the probably the 12th century, and the present building was almost completely reconstructed in 1888-9. The dedication to St. Anne is not ancient. It was, in fact, only given in my lifetime in 1989 uh, to mark the centenary of the rebuilding. There was a dedication, but no one could find out what it had been, and so they said, we'll go with St. Anne. St. Anne, of course, is the legendary mother of the Virgin Mary. So we'll have a look around the inside and point out the features. It's a very small church, and of course, the structure is very large, not entirely, but very largely Victorian. There are some very interesting old relics, though. So as usual, we start at the west end, looking east, and you can see immediately that little Norman chancel arch. That is Norman, that wall is Norman, and either side are hagioscopes. They are there to allow people to see the altar, because obviously such a small ch chancel arch, you couldn't be able to see if you were standing either side. And standing, because in the Middle Ages, certainly the Norman period, there are no pews, there are no fixed seats. Now here we have these pieces of Anglo-Saxon stonework that were discovered during the rebuilding. Here we have St. Anne looking, of course, well, Jesus' grandmother, so she has to look very much like a, a grandmother. The font is a, a copy of the Norman one. We shall see the Norman one a bit later on. The Norman one had a bit of an accident and had to be replaced. And in the west window we have fragments of medieval glass. Now whether they're actually from here originally or were brought from Pershaw Abbey, because we are just outside Pershaw. We don't know. Pershaw Abbey, of course, important monastic foundation, and the nave was demolished. And of course, all the stained glass from the nave and much of the chancel would have been lost. So, what happened? Now, here we have what happened here, you ask. Well, these are drawings of the rebuilding. You can see how they basically pulled the nave all the way down to the foundations and then built it up again. So these walls, well, I mean, these windows are immediately obvious. These are Victorian windows. Pulpit is a Victorian wooden one, I believe. It's uh, the glory of garden in memory of John and Philip and Phyllis House. And then the, um, their son, this pulpit's erected by their daughter, but there's no date on it, but uh, Victorian. The arch, I say, this is Norman, and as you saw in the drawing, the bells, the bells are just over the top. So we get into the chancel here, you can see there is some um, nice old medieval floor tiles, again, probably salvaged from the abbey when they knocked down the nave. There is a, this is a pillar piscina, Norman, firmly fixed in place, of course, because thieves are horrible people. It's quite, quite a deep bowl. They would later have much shallower bowls, but of course a piscine is a, basically is a type of sink for washing the hands and the sacred vessels after communion. And the idea is it drains into the foundations of the church, so the sacred elements, again remember transubstantiation, the idea here, sacred elements become part of the sacred edifice. These windows, now these are, this window here certainly is uh, square-headed, it's going to be pre-Victorian, and that is the font bowl. It's rather cracked and battered. East window, it is finished. The crucifixion with the Virgin Mary and St. John. Of course, there's no old material here with anything about St. Anne, because St. Anne isn't connected with the church formally until 1989. And so here we have it, a little war memorial there, just a 
scroll. And you can see here how the hagioscope opens up the view, and there's the two bell ropes, one either side. So a very simple building and blocked priest doorway. Very simple and typical in that of most Norman churches, most parish churches in the you know, about um, 12, about 1150 and most parish churches would be this kind of shape. Obviously, the windows would be those little Mormon ones and not these bigger ones that have been inserted later. So that's the inside, and we'll have a look at then at the outside. Oh, this is an interesting one, actually. This is a memorial to um, Corporal A. P. Hodgetts and Corporal A. J. Hands of this village died in their service to the country in South Africa during the Boer War. This tablet was placed by friends and parishioners, A.D. 1902. Now, the Boer War, is, of course, is one of those colonial conflicts. It's about the British Empire taking over somebody else, taking over the Boer colony. The Boers had taken over the land from the local Africans. And, and it, it's a war today that's looked at as, well, well, it's just one of these colonial wars. But these memorials, this is the first time you really see these war memorials in churches, well, commonly, there's a few from the Crimean War, but uh, in the 1850s, but really war memorials become a thing in after the Boer War, and that sets the pattern then for the Great War and the Second World War. So that's the inside here, and we'll have a look around the outside. So here we are outside at St Anne's Wire Piddle. You can see over here, rather, the belfry at the east end of the nave. Not uncommon, but not terribly common either. The nave, as we have seen, is basically Victorian. The, most of the older work is in the chancel. So we'll have a look around and point out again the salient features in this little, little church. You can really see here the Victorian character of the nave with that uh, coarse rubble and and those windows with quite crisp carving. The belfry is older as we saw from that picture inside and then a rather nice house opposite. I'm not sure whether that was the vicarage but it's very nice. Um, and then down here the graveyard slopes down towards the Piddle Brook at the bottom. Um, it's a lovely part of the world. It's um, Edward Elgar was born around here um, his birthplace is a museum now. It's uh, not exactly this area, but it's this part, this part of Worcestershire, which is very, very pretty. You see here the the difference between the chancel and the nave. Now that big chunk of masonry at the east of the nave that looks medieval. I suspect that is the remains of some sort of rude stair, but it would have to be a very rude one to use the word um, in a punning fashion because it's only a, a low church. And uh, here's the chancel, you can see different coloured stone, the stonework here is much, um, a much um, mellower colour. And there's that blocked priest's doorway and this rather nice, these rather nice coins and that east window. And I suspect the opening there is 14th century, maybe maybe late, maybe early, maybe later. Um, churchyard on the north side, because the, of course the road is on the north side. You, this is a, one of those churches you approach the north side, nice holly, big holly tree there. And I won't go down that slope. No, actually there's another big solid buttress here, so I suspect they are just buttresses rather. It makes more sense than trying to put a rude stair in a building like this. Porch, of course, is Victorian, glazed. It's a nice little window there. Some of that tracery looks like it might be medieval. So, and again, it wouldn't be at all unusual for a, a nice medieval window to be kept and put back in when they rebuilt. Porch, wooden porches are normal around here. The the doorway, that looks 13th century, perhaps it's certainly not Norman. And again, it's been retained in the rebuild, which makes sense. And then here we've got a little lancet, which surely has to be part of 
well, at least partially, has to be earlier. So that's the outside here at Wire Piddle. There's a, obviously, before I conclude, obviously the tracery here at the west end, the west window, is probably medieval because that glass in there is going to have been here before the rebuild. Probably not originally in this church, probably from Perchall Abbey, but it's going to have been brought here when the abbey was partially demolished. So that is Wire Piddle. And so there we have it, St Anne's Wire Piddle. Wire Piddle is one of those villages that is best known for having a rather amusing name. But it should be well known for this beautiful little church that sits here at the end of Church Lane as a wonderful piece of English history. Well, thank you for watching, and may God bless you and keep you until next time.